Now to a new podcast from The Intercept called Murderville, Georgia. It looks at the 1998 murder of a Taco Bell employee in a small Georgia town. A man was convicted for the crime, but more people turned up dead. Some wonder if that was a wrongful conviction and if that allowed a real killer to go free. The podcast is based on reporting by Intercept journalists Jordan Smith and Liliana Segura. My colleague Elaine Quijano recently spoke with her for Red and Blue. And Liliana joins me now from Nashville, Tennessee. Liliana, welcome. Set up for our viewers, if you will, in more detail, the events that this podcast explores. Sure. So, well, it begins in the fall of 1998, and uh, and the setting is a small town na named Adel, Georgia. This is uh, a town of no more than you know 5,000 or so residents, uh, some 40 miles uh, north of the Florida line. Um, and in the fall of 1998, you see a uh, a murder robbery at a Taco Bell in Adel. A single mother named uh, Donna Brown uh, was shot uh, in the face. It's a pretty shocking murder for a small town these things don't happen you know very often and what what follows is an investigation that um, by all appearances uh, is it, pretty shoddy a lot of really critical evidence isn't um, isn't picked up is overlooked um, but police pretty swiftly um, arrest a man for the crime uh, and the name of the man is is Devanya Inman and there's a, a real sort of a shortage of evidence directly linking Devanya Inman to the crime but uh, but the Adel Police Department and, and really primarily the Georgia Bureau of Investigation um, zeroes in on him and, and puts together a case against him. He's eventually convicted and, and, and sentenced to life in prison for this crime. Um, so, you know, ordinarily one would think, okay, case closed, mm -hmm. uh, except for, you know, in a matter of uh, months and over the next year and a half, basically, a series of additional murders uh, uh, target uh, individuals in this in this same small town. Uh, and by the end of it, you've got uh, four people dead, uh, including Donna Brown. Uh, two men in prison, uh, one of whom is Devanya Inman, and one of the crimes unsolved. Uh, so the question that really sort of lingers throughout this 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 project for us, and the one that we've been trying to figure out, uh, is you know if, if that first murder uh, had been more thoroughly investigated uh, and evidence pointing to a different suspect had been followed, you know, is it possible that these next few crimes, these next murders, could have been avoided? So the events that you examined took place 20 years ago, and I'm wondering if you can give us a sense of what might have been revealed about the role that race and even immigrant status might play when it comes to police investigations and also uh, prosecutions as well. Yeah, yeah, and I'm glad that you asked that question. So, so as I mentioned before, Devanya Inman is a black man uh, who had recently come back to Adel, Georgia, after spending years, you know, growing up in Sacramento. He's got roots in Adel, um, sort of uh, in the, uh, the black side of town, so to speak. Uh, and and what, one of the things that's very striking when you write about criminal justice and wrongful convictions, you know, it's not it's not news that race plays a role, right? Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to the, to the efforts that law enforcement um, do or do not undertake to solve a crime, when it comes to the sort of posture. Um, of officials uh, wh whose lives matter more, you know, uh, whether they be victims or, or, or suspects or defendants. And in this case, it was very clear that uh, to us that Devanya Inman's life as a defendant didn't matter a whole lot when it came to getting this case right. To back up, the first the first um, victim in the in the Taco Bell crime was was a, a white woman um, named Donna Brown. The second crime, it's important to say, has never been solved. Um, this is a murder that took place in in the spring of 2000, and the victim was a man named Salish Patel, and he was an in Indian immigrant who had only been visiting Adel for a short amount of time when he was really brutally murdered. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was a, a an extremely violent crime, um, which one would think would have uh, offered quite a bit of forensic evidence. To the Georgia Bureau of Investigation when they when they began looking into it in the third in the third uh, murder in this that makes up this incredibly disturbing period in this tiny town um, you see the contrast in the way in which this um, culminating crime is treated and the way that the town reacts to it as, as compared to um, the previous victim Salish Patel who was uh, relatively unknown but also you know an outsider an immigrant um, and and it didn't seem like law enforcement was was uh, 
all that concerned with with solving this crime um, in any kind of uh, you know with any kind of depth or haste. Uh, it's an interesting time to have your podcast come out because, as I'm sure you're aware, there's been a lot of talk on both sides of the aisle, politically speaking, about criminal justice reform, and that's a conversation that really hasn't happened quite in the way that it seems to be happening right now. And I wonder, from your perspective, as someone who uh, spent years working on uh, this podcast. What impact, if any, do you think that podcasts and documentaries might be having on some of those efforts uh, on the criminal justice system itself? Well, I think they've been immensely important. You know, I think a podcast, you know, obviously like Serial, a series like Making a Murder, I think that, uh, you know, it, they, they kind of arrived at a time when I think more and more Americans have a consciousness around wrongful convictions, mm -hmm. I, I specifically, you know, the idea that that uh, innocent people go to prison uh, is, is much more mainstream than it was, you know, even when I started doing this work. But it's so important also to note that, you know, it, it's not just about wrongful convictions, right? What, this, what these stories do is shine a light on, on the system itself. Mm -hmm. And on the many, many ways in which the system uh, fails certain communities, um, in which the system, you know, is guided, um, you know, whether consciously or not, by racial bias, by the kind of unconscious bias we we, we see all the time, and mm -hmm. that's what makes it relevant to to what you're describing, to these efforts, you know, to reform uh, the criminal justice system. And so that's what I think all of us who write about uh, wrongful convictions hope to do. You know, it's not just that innocent people's lives matter; it's that that people who are caught up in this um, incredibly um, powerful, crushing system. This is what they're up against every day. Right, certainly is raising awareness about what it is like to be in that system. Liliana Segura, thank you so much, Liliana. I really appreciate your time. Thank you.